Hello, this is Gene. Sometimes I do things that uh, if I wait a little bit longer, then I would have more things to talk about. Um, I did a video a couple days ago about the NFL and how they're SJW-ish going on right now. And uh, right after I did that video, the president said some things. And uh, all the uh, players, not all of them, but a lot of them, basically responded to his... Uh, uh, claim or statement about uh, if he was an owner, he would fire people for doing what they're doing. And uh, so these guys started doing stuff. And there was a guy in the Bills that was actually like stretching during the nat national anthem. Now, this is in indicative of our culture right now. And I said it in my video before. I talk about these kids. And I say kids. Now, obviously, when they become in the NFL, they're adults. And even to a legal, uh, lesser extent, when they go to college, they're adults as well. But the athletes especially, football players especially, are never told no. When, when once you're um, looked at as a star, let's say, that you might be recruited by a big a university, everybody basically is, uh, is let our yes men for you. Uh, their agents will be around sniffing around trying to just to get uh, their tentacles in there so they can be there when you actually uh, become pro. Uh, this is more prevalent in the NBA or uh, in basketball, but it's also a, a clearly a prevalent in uh, football because uh, there were several um, reports back in um, a couple of years ago that there was a Pee Wee football. Uh, team or uh, a league, I guess, down in South Florida, and these, uh, you know, they were betting on the games, and they were trying to make sure these guys would would follow them to high school, and you know, just basically get their tentacles in there so they get some money out of them. Once <clears throat> the guy went to the the NFL, they would give them money or something like that. They would say, "Now you owe me money later on, and you got to pay me back, and all that stuff like that." So <clears throat> this is nothing really new over the last 10 or 15 years especially. Um, another really a, a byproduct of the, the game being so uh, one-sided when, uh, when it comes to multiculturalism. It's dominated by black players and uh, some of these guys that, that pl basically uh, feed off these kids are normally black, so they, they basically just do it to themselves. But getting to uh, my point I was trying to say in that other video is that these guys go to college and college is so steep in cultural Marxism right now that they bet, they really believe that they're victims. Some of them don't to a point, but once they get around other guys in that locker room, they just fall along with it because they're not leaders. They're a bunch of guys that just follow along. And they're, uh, the, the only real leaders was the guys like the guy uh, in Pittsburgh yesterday, uh, a former captain, I think, in the in the U.S. Army, went out and actually uh, standed up for the, the the flag, and the rest of the um, team was in the tunnel. They wouldn't come out. So I don't know if that's disrespectful. To me, it is. Um, and obviously, people all over Twitter last night were talking about it. We're talking about there is a uh, rule in uh, the NFL that says that they're supposed to do this and they're supposed to stand. They're supposed to, uh, you know, a good, you know. Fat, uh, go toward the flag, put their heart, all that stuff. So, yeah, is it a rule that, that somebody might get fined off? Well, you know, the NFL fined people for putting 9-11 on their shoes. So it's it's strange how some guys wanted to, I don't know, not celebrate 9-11, but remember it. And the NFL came, off, came after it. So, again, I, I'm all about free speech, and I don't really care that they want to do it. I don't think that doing it for the where the anthem is going on is the right way to do it and then to make a mockery of it by stretching so everybody can see you that just shows the type of the culture that we're in right now and when I say they're kids obviously I'm 52 I look at guys who are 23 24 as kids and just because they're big and they look like beasts on the field it doesn't mean that their brain is formed correctly uh, it doesn't under they don't understand the actual the um, I guess people outside walking. Um, of course, my dogs have to follow them. In the Max, stop. Anyway, I'll let him out because he needs to do this. Go ahead.
Who knows? They might come back here in our house. So, anyway, let me shut this. Stay out there. So, the point I was trying to make is uh, they never told. They never told no. And then, if they're most of them are all followers because you play team sports and they're yes, they're all stars, but there are still guys that have to be followers. And you have the guys that lead. So if you have somebody on the team that has a type of uh, personality that you want to do something, you'll follow them along. And they also think that are part of a, prov a brotherhood that if somebody does it, the other guys have to be there and support it as well. So you would see guys kneeling, and you'd see another guy standing next to them, uh, standing, and then have their hands with them. Some of them do the black power salute. The guy that was uh, singing at the, T I think it was a Detroit game, he sang that national anthem, then got down to his knees and gave the black power suit at the end of it. So I don't know, when they talk about, they're saying that the NFL is saying that, that uh, Donald Trump is divisive because of what he said about this. And they look at their players, and their players are seriously divisive. And it's almost, I'm not going to say it's continually or uh, on racial eight, uh, lines because most of the people standing up happen to be white. They're, of course, I said in my other video, there's not a lot of people in the, black, in the, uh, the NFL that are white anymore. But I'd say overall that there are more white guys that are standing up and um, do, doing what they have to do. I just, you know, if you want to protest or... i just rather that they would come out and say what their grievances is or that they believe everything the Black Lives Matter tell them. So if their uh, issue is the demands that Black Lives Matter has on their own website... That that's what they're protesting for, then fine. You believe that way, the NFL will be over. You're not going to be there for a long time. The idea that we can't have another league or another type of uh, something that will uh, galvanize people to watch, uh, the NFL is not that important. It, just is, it isn't. And the fact is there are hundreds of people on Twitter that are burning their their uh, journey jerseys. I'm not going to do that. I mean, I have an old... Uh, Miami Dolphins one, those guys that that when I bought that that uh, shirt years ago, they didn't do stuff like this. But as far as me watching the current iteration of the Dolphins, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to support it. Um, I was going to go a couple games this year. I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm not going to be told every day of my life that it's my fault for everything that they have to go through just because the way I look. And I'm over with it. I'm just so over with it. Um, I, I've, I've taken all that white guilt off of me uh, and the cultural Marxism, and I've, I've stripped it off of me. Um, I hope what this is going to do, it's going to awaken even more people. Uh, we, we got a nice sign over in Germany. There are more nationalists that were elected. We went from zero to 88 in the, their parliament over there. Of course, Merkel still won, but people are starting to wake up. Stuff like this is a huge way to wake up a lot of people that are like conservative in nature, but they're not enough, you know, and they're going to start realizing who's the people that are with the the black power salutes and uh, kneeling for the, the, the anthem that has nothing that says, you know, you're, you're a different color, so we're going to be white supremacists and we're going to roll over you. It doesn't say anything about that. It talks about how we, our country was formed and how we were, are doing the revolution that we we all together and got through that and made our country. Uh, it should be a way to uni unify. Now, a couple came st stand up and like they were still, it was against Trump. Now, Trump wasn't president when Colin Kaepernick did what he did. And there were a couple of conservatives online. Uh, A.G. DeGalgo was defending Ka Kaepernick and saying, you know, people said, you know, he's a, he likes Castro and stuff, and, oh, and she was defending. So no, he doesn't. Well, he just had a, a you know, a T-shirt with that on there. So I, not everybody that you wear doesn't mean that you support him, but clearly he thinks that he. I mean, he, his girlfriend. I don't know. Maybe they're married. Are feminists? Feminists. Their ideology comes from Marxism. It comes from that side of the political spe spectrum. So, of course, he probably believes some of the shit that Lenamite said or Marxist said or, or Fidel Tascro said. And maybe he has got some Cuban in his, uh, in his background, although he was raised by a white family. So, 
Um, so like I said, it was really funny that I was watching this going on. I was going to watch Red Red Zone possibly a little bit, but I didn't watch any of it. When I started starting it, it was all over Twitter when they started saying uh, these people were not coming out when the Steelers didn't come out. And Steelers is like Green Bay. They're like a national team. Um, the fact that uh, Aaron Rodgers was a guy I've actually met, I uh, talked to him for a while when my son had a Make-A-Wish back in 2007 before Red Rodgers became a star in, a, in the league. Um, but he's from Berkeley, and he has a, another one who's married plus or had a girlfriend who's a feminist, a, a mun. Who's a, and I, I have no respect for women, excuse me, men that cow downs to the, the, the ideology of a female in their life. Um, you know, Clearly, he, he went to Berkeley. He probably might already had that. But it, 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 the fact that he comes out saying stuff now and, and, and black play, players are talking about and they get choked up, the fact that the, the president said something to him. So I'm wondering where this comes from. So this, this uh, thing of um, being snowflakes and being triggered, and you just don't believe that a guy is 6'5", that weighs 350 pounds, could be triggered by the president saying, uh, if I was an owner, I would fire you for doing that, that they have to all of a sudden have to go out there and, and stay, you know, kneel down. This is not going to work for them. And, you know, this is, we talk about 4D, 4D chest, chest work or play. Uh, this is like a different level. And that's why Trump is so good when it comes to this. He knows how the media is going to portray it. And if he says that, he knows it's going to galvanize his, uh, base. I don't consider myself part of his base, but it's going to. You can tell it does. You know, the Democrats have said it for years in public almost, clear, clearly on tape, that that they know that they can manipulate their side of the vote, by, and they're basically saying all uh, voters are stupid. Tr Trump is doing the same thing here. I'm not saying that people who are right who are, or on my side of the political spectrum are being stupid to follow along with this. I am very upset myself. I'm a veteran. And I don't like the fact that they're doing that. Do I? Do they have the rights to do it? Yeah, but at the same time, if I was, I would have probably done the same thing. I would have said, "You're out. You're off my team." I, I'm still going to get money either way because the contracts they get from the TVs, and that's why they don't care that if they start losing money or uh, losing uh, viewership, they know they they have that talk, that TV contract that's good for a while, and you know, obviously it'll hurt them later on. But it's going to happen. I said it in my video uh, yesterday that Goodell is going to allow them to have this month where they talk about issues. But it isn't going to be about any other issues about their own perceived oppression. Uh, when somehow they're not being that oppressed, they got <laughs> they had the right to go to a university, most of them, and play at a high level there and got um, drafted or signed as a free agent and play in the NFL. Uh, and I said in my video last time that I, I think that overall, compared to other sports, that football players get less than they should. Overall, though, that they all make way too much. And hopefully this will wake up more and more people that says we should stop paying this much so they can get all this money. Again, I don't really care if they want to march or they want to talk about uh, people in the Black Caucus and, and Congress and talking about it. I'm going to come out and say whatever their grievances are. If they are not based in any type of factual basis I'm going to call it out and regardless of my skin color if you know if a white person said something so stupid that uh, you know white let's say if a white person that's a academic per, uh, person like a professor said it doesn't help having uh, white fathers in the home that it, it there's no uh, statistics that says that's a good thing I will call him out because clearly it hurts and it destroys the black community and none of them are talking about this. They're not saying this is the problem because almost all of them were, were raised by single mothers. And they had this idea that their mother was so like a God, uh, an angel from God that she got through all this shit. When almost all of them was supported by cap taxpayers while they were on welfare. Not all of them, but most of them. And now the boy thinks that they've done something. They got out of the hood or whatever. And now he's going to pay back his mother for all that she did. Instead of, hey, why don't you stay with dad? Why, you know, maybe this wouldn't have been this issue. And maybe my ideology might be a little bit different. And I love a couple people to come out, and I'll try to find them below and, and link it to them. A couple of uh, young uh, black American conservatives have come out and just railed on these NFL players. And one of them was a gold, ball, gold star 
wife uh, saying his her husband got killed over there, and it's very very um, emotional for people that they look at the flag and what it means and when when a, a flag is striped over someone's coffin who served our country, and these guys who play a kids game uh, decide to kneel down for it. Now I want to be blunt as as I as I possibly can be. These guys are better athletes than I ever was in my life, okay? But they weren't that much better than me. Uh, the best uh, quarterback in where I grew up probably threw the ball five yards for, longer than me. Um, the nobody was a better I, no one was a better uh, receiver of a pass. I was I had the best hands probably in the state, um, but I didn't get the opportunity to play certain things based on the fact I didn't have the motivation to do it. And the other reason is people looked at me because I didn't have enough speed, per se, or I was I didn't strump as much as I did. And this is back in the 80s. So the idea that back then it was very uh, balanced as far as the racial demographics when it came to playing football. Uh, but it, it was very uh, difficult. I mean, people look at you differently because they don't think you're athletic based on the fact that you're white. And, yeah, of course, there are a lot of white guys that are very athletic. But I was slow. But I always got open, and I played all these guys uh, on, in practice before uh, they did the, the selection um, to tell me that I should go and do something else, you know, work, play on the line or something like that. Um, they couldn't cover me. They couldn't keep, keep the ball from me, and some of these guys went on and played in the NFL. Um, Hassan John Jones, I played. He played for, the, for uh, um, the, the Vikings, and I played with several guys. That played in ML. Uh, that played for uh, baseball. Now baseball, I I just wasn't. When I got to be 13, we went to the bigger field. Uh, we went from like a tw- you know the 205 feet fee- field to like normal, almost like a a normal field like in college or in, and I it was like a different thing. It took me like an hour and a half to get down to first base. So anyway. My point is is this, is that, okay, if I just said they were 20% better than me in all phases of the game, but why are they getting so much money to play a stupid game like this? And we don't need that to watch football. Uh, Good football, good efficient football, you know, if you watch like Canada's play, like the Air Force or the Army or Navy, uh, it's very good um, style of football. Uh, BYU, uh, Notre Dame before they started letting everybody in. Uh, Penn State, to a point, um, even the, uh, the other lower levels, it, it's just football. <laughs> it's funny that, you know, it's nice to see someone get knocked over and stuff like that. that I guess that's all, you know, that they package that, uh, the NFL does, and then they don't really care about when people are dying from consumptions. And as an MRA, I've talked about... Uh, always uh, believing, not believing, but uh, have due process for people. But when you look at all the types of um, educations of people uh, hitting their female spouse, um, it's above normal. And, yeah, the NFL has some ways to go with that as well. I'm not trying to white knight for women, but uh, it it seems like everybody has CTE now. You know, everybody's trying to say that hair and Aaron Hernandez, she isn't responsible. Well, I believe he is. And even when you're, something's going on with you, you're still responsible. Like the kid who ran over the girl. We don't even know if he actually did that in Charlottesville. I think she died of a heart heart attack. But even though his car got hit by somebody, and he's also been diagnosed with uh, six, uh, six or whatever, he's still somewhat responsible. And so was Aunt Hernandez. I'm going into a different area here. But it was just funny. I know I was like, this is like the second time I've done nine of these, I think. And it's like the second time that something happened after I did the first one. And uh, it just got, it got bigger. And I just want to talk about it. And I do really re- 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 uh, appreciate those who've actually watched my video. And also the people that actually are, are talking about, you know, dump the NFL. And, and guys are making a, a, a statement. And I think there's so more, such more, so, so much more to this as well. I think that this is an awakening for our country, and if you have, if they start waking these guys up, that maybe they'll also wake up the other part of it that needs to be waking up. That 
uh, Western civilization needs to be saved. And we have to celebrate the fact that it was us that created it. And we want to, we want to be the uh, stewards, stewards of it. And that necessarily means we need to, uh, to preserve the white race. And call me a racist for saying it, but uh, I, I think this is the best way around. And we have to put them, those people who are athletes, uh, they, need to, they, really, they need to understand where they really fall priorities. Priori, I can't even say the word, in our country. Country, God, whatever, uh, your family, that is way up here. Sports can never be there. It can uplift. It's a nice story, but it's entertainment. Real life is more important, and I'm, I'm very, very par uh, proud that people are standing up uh, against this, and hopefully uh, we'll get some change. Thank you for watching. You guys have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.